Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good whatever time you're watching it right now. I am Falcon with the Polar Podcast. Introduce yourself and tell us how you're doing, gentlemen. I am Barnaby Jones, and I'm having a pretty great day. This is Chapel, doing pretty awesome. Keith's here, having a great day myself. Got some uh, good news. It's, you know, personal, so I'm not going to share it, but it's good. Woo! So, I don't know. Cheers. I don't know. Well, yeah, we're here with another episode of the Polar Podcast. We're doing another round of this or that. Uh, I thought that went pretty good last time, so we thought we'd do it again, this time with a, a general topic of musicians uh, doing some this or that. Uh, I decided I would start today because I, I need to make a, a quick note about my list for Barnaby. Uh, I did a theme with his where all the, uh, the this or that's had the same first name. So some of them don't really make sense uh, why they're paired together, that they just have the same first name, and that's it. Uh, <laughs> so I'm going to swing you with the first one I got. Which is John Lennon or John Paul Jones? Oh, by the way, let, let me go ahead and start by saying I fucking love that. That's fantastic. Um, I'm gonna start throwing themes in now. Like that just adds like a whole new level of fun to all this. Um, <laughs> honestly, like just I'm not even gonna like try and think about it too long. Let's just speed this up. John Paul Jones, because John Paul Jones has multiple bands that I've heard him with that are fucking amazing. It's like anything he touches is fucking amazing. Some of that John and Yoko stuff. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Agreed. I fucking love the Beatles, but it's going to be John Paul Jones because he's one of the greatest musicians to ever live. Um, love, love you, John Paul Jones. I know you're watching. I uh, just want to let you know. Uh, we love you here at Anna Polar. That's awesome. So, Chapel. Tony Iommi or Zach Wilde? Well, <laughs> very tough one, but it, it is also an easy one. It's Tony Iommi. Because without a Tony Iommi, there is no Zach Wilde. Uh, That's fair. Tony, Tony is the creator of the riff. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> he is the master of the riff. Now, is he, is he, I mean, Tony could be an intricate player. You just don't see it at, like, as much in the Black Black Sabbath shit as he has in other stuff. Like, he's guested on stuff with Brian. Him and Brian May are friends. Like, Tony put out a solo album, which I love. I love his first solo record. Each each song has a different vocalist on it. I, he had probably had no problem getting, like, Phil Anselmo, because he's like, of course, you're Tony fucking Iommi. <laughs> <laughs> so, Keith, I got one for you, man. James right, Hetfield... Right. Or Dave Mustaine. Uh, well, I know we're, where he's going. Uh, we're just gonna have to stick with the same old story because uh, it's got to be James. You know, that's he's one of the main reasons I play guitar. So, right, that in and of itself kind of wins that day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then for all the other reasons in the band episode that I already mentioned, uh, the, was that the band this or that? One of our old episodes. Go watch it. <laughs> I'm going to throw my first one to Falcon. Anthony Kiedis or Shannon Hoon? Oh, Shannon Hoon all day. Like, I love Anthony Kiedis, but no, nah, Shannon all day. Like, it doesn't, it, doesn't get, it doesn't get, like, you get a lot more soul from Shannon from from Anthony, I'm not sure what feelings I get from him. Some from based on his lyrics and stuff. Like I don't know how I feel at the end of some Chili Pepper songs, but I feel the Blind Melon song emotional collect connection. So, yeah, I'd have to go with Shannon on that. Even though I was curious, that's a strange one because when you said Anthony, I at first I was like, well, probably gonna be Anthony, whoever else he says here. But I was wrong before I could even. Before you could even finish the sentence. <laughs> I, I, I didn't know which way you'd go, but I thought it would be a more difficult choice for you. It, well, <laughs> Shannon's, Shannon's pretty close to my heart. Like, I, I love those, what few we got, uh, Blind Melon albums, so much. Uh, I, mean, I named the dog after one of them, so it's like, I just I love him, man. I, it's, I absolutely adore him. And I, I like the Chili Peppers a lot, too. I'm a, I'm a big Chili Pepper fan, but yeah. It, it had to go with the, the emotional connection to Shannon's what gets me more. 
because uh, I don't know. I've never been under the bridge doing heroin, so that I don't. I don't get that one. That's fair. <laughs> one time is all you need. All right, so uh, I got one for for you, Keith, and this is there's there's literally no reason I'm asking this. So this is just a strange yep. pair. But Scott Wyland or Steven Tyler? Ah. That's weird. <laughs> no rhyme or reason, man. Just uh, just one I thought I'd toss at you. <laughs> Yeah, that that's bizarre. I mean, I would almost have to count songs, but I bet in their shorter career, I might like more uh, Stone Temple Pilots because Aerosmith's great, but it's not. I don't like every song or every album from them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go with Scott. That's fair. And that's not on ability either, because you know. I, I mean, I guarantee you, uh, Steven Tyler would out sing Scott any day. I got, I got a random one myself here for Barnaby. Um, not sure why or where I came up with this. <laughs> Two bass players. I got Michael Anthony from Van Halen or Clifford Williams from ACDC. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Um... I think Michael Anthony probably plays more variety. Um, <laughs> it's ACDC. It's that's not. debatable. <laughs> wow, that's that's a tough one of basis. I just don't care for. Um, I might probably have to go Michael Anthony just because like, I I probably would be more prone to if someone was like, all right, you have to pick one of these. I'm be like. I really, really don't want to listen to ACDC. So. <laughs> like, let's be honest. Everyone's already heard enough ACDC in their life. That's it. We've already heard the amount we need to hear in our lives. Like, you know, we're not the kind of people that need more of that. I got all yeah. I needed. I was growing up playing football, going to sporting events, you know, um, any cookout in the South. I've heard enough ACDC. It's fine. <laughs> Falcon, I got one for you. Terry Bazio or Bill Ward? Oh, Bill Ward. I fucking love Bill Ward so much. He's just, he's such a quaint person. Like, forget ability, everything aside. Just everything you see with Bill is so nice. He's so peaceful to watch. I enjoy how he is just in general. Uh, and, I, you know, Never Say Die is my favorite Sabbath album, which features two Bill Ward songs. So, For the, for the ho- folks at home, who is the... Um... I already forgot the name. The other guy, Terry Bazio, is Zappa's yeah. drummer, or Zappa's main drummer. Um, there were, I mean, the Zappa played with everybody, but his main main drummer. That was the reason I got that was if if you go back and watch, uh, Falcon picked him in a previous episode um, for uh, an interview question. Yeah, I, okay. I love Terry. He did like most of the Zappa's like my favorite stuff Zappa did in the seventies. Like I'm pretty sure he was on Apostrophe, which we mentioned in one of the recent videos and stuff. I, he's he didn't work with the Mothers of Invention, but he did a lot of Zappa stuff. But again, I'm putting skill aside on that. That's just I just like Bill Ward. If I could have like a Bill Ward, like teddy bear in my room, I would totally do that. <laughs> I just have him. <laughs> hey, uh, Bill, if you're watching. You know the next one you need to make. Yeah, that, build a bear, Bill really. Ward edition. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. So um, I got one for you, Chapel. Ooh. Uh, so I, I don't know how you'd lean on this because I feel like I hear you talk about both of these guys a shit ton. Okay. Uh, but Devin Townsend or Phil Anselmo? Oh, how dare you! <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Oh, wow. Oh, I'm gonna get a lot of flack for this because it, for just pure talent. In being able to do anything, you know, Devin Townsend is a is you know surpasses Phil, but Phil is the reason I scream. You know, I do metal vocals. He's my mate. I I, I train myself to do that by listening to the Great Southern Trend Kill album and trying to mimic what Phil was doing, and that's how I'm able, like in the Hellstorms Hell on Earth, to do those high screams like that. That's thanks to Phil Anselmo. So. 
I I wouldn't be doing what I love doing if it wasn't for Phil Anselmo. Hands down. So Falcon, I'm gonna throw one back at you. Okay. Because uh, we got another one here with Bill Ward, or John Bottom. Bill Ward or John Bottom? Yeah. I gotta go Bonzo, man. Uh, I love Bill Ward, but John yeah, Bottom. That's, that's where I wanted. I mean, you know, I get what you're saying. I, yeah, I'm not gonna re-explain why I like Bill Ward again, but uh, yeah, exactly. I. That's a very tough question, just because I I like both of them, um, but I, I'm too much of a Zep head to not go with with Bottom. Right. I just I fucking love him. Uh, if I could get a build a bear of John Bottom, I would also take that. <laughs> if you're listening, <laughs> a little drum kit and everything. <laughs> 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 yes okay all right so i'm gonna tell someone in uh, keys this time and this is a uh, uh, again just no rhyme or reason to this but the the bass player who's been for nintendo for like the last six years who's done all that great work that we've had or Cl or cliff burton <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Damn. That's not fair. That's not fair. Uh, uh, oh, that's not fair. <laughs> or like everyone else, kind of going on the uh, the nostalgia or what actually got us into music. You gotta, I gotta give most credit to Cliff. On the bass side, I mean, that was like one of my earliest influences into the bass, the rumble sound. But damn, I mean, whoever's doing I we should look up his name and we'll flash it on the screen. This this guy is killer, the one doing the Nintendo stuff. I think it's a couple of different composers, and they've got this small team. And they're kicking ass. They're kicking ass. The music they've produced in this last decade has been astonishing. Totally but I, I guess because without Cliff, this guy wouldn't exist. So I, I would go to Cliff too. Like as much as I, I mean, it's a shame we only have so much to pick from from Cliff. Even though the the dude from the Nintendo, whatever his name is, has just killed it for like seven years straight. It's got to be the same guy because you can tell a lot of the bass tracks even sound the same, the same slap style and everything. But I would I would still go with Cliff too. I just. Uh, I thought that'd be an, a tough choice. Uh, yeah, that is really <laughs> tough. I mean, because even the material we do have with Cliff, he's hard to hear. And but this guy, the Nintendo Master, is—you can hear him everywhere. And their song composition is just nuts. So keep it, it up, man. <laughs> keep it up. All right. Um, I got one for Shuffles. Yeah. Uh, I love me. Okay, my, <laughs> my next two for you, which I'm only doing one, of course, at a time. My next two for you are, are hitting on some musicians, musicians we've already talked about. But let's go with Kerry King versus Zach Wild. Zach Wild. <laughs> okay. Oh. I, I didn't I, even I, think. Kerry King is... As as a Slayer fan, Carrie Carrie is a really good guitar player, but you wouldn't know it because he rides the whammy bar all the time. You know what I mean? He's just <laughs> what? even his solos, like it's like his solos got to where they just they have no reason. It's just like I'm just going to do a little little something and then throw that whammy in there a thousand times, you know. But at the same time, the last few Slayer records that Jeff Hanneman, when he was still alive, was on. Jeff just got to where he didn't want to go to the studio. He wrote the songs, and Kerry would play both parts in the studio. So you know Kerry can do it. You know Kerry's a good guitar player. Uh, but at the same time, it's just like he just he just he 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 spent too much time just being the mascot for the band. You know what I mean? Instead of letting the lead singer be the mascot, he took over that whole role. Is like, you know, it's like when you think Anthrax, you think Scott Ian. You know what I mean? Hell, even when you think Pantera, you would think Dimebag Daryl, not Phil per se. So, I mean, you might, but those were the guys who also stuck out in that band who just sort of became cheerleaders for their band. And I think he he takes it a little too seriously. And uh, and then his, I don't know, his later guitar work just lacked for me. 
And uh-huh. as to where Zach Wild, Zach Wild just pisses excellence every morning when he wakes up. So. <laughs> Barnaby Jones. I have one for you, my friend. Roger Waters or Tom Petty? Jeez. Oh, what, man. What a choice. <laughs> Did I put you in one of them? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I fucking love both of those people. Uh, right. <laughs> amazing musicians that made completely different kinds of music. Um, fuck. That's really hard to think about, like, if I, I could only have one, you know. I'm going to say Roger Waters. Mm. I nice. fucking love Pink Floyd. I mean, don't get me wrong, Tom Petty is fucking amazing. I There, there was one summer where like, the only thing I listened to was Tom Petty's Greatest Hits, like, I played Refugee 300 times. It was amazing. <laughs> but yeah, I'm going to have to go Roger Waters. Like, because I, I can't live without Pink Floyd. That's, uh, fucking love Pink Floyd. All right, Keith, I'm going to throw one your way. We're going to do bassists. David Ellison or Steve Harris? Oh. Well. I mean, okay. First of all, I do have a book written by Dave Ellison, which was a great... I read it. Uh, in, insider, a great insider to the industry of old. Uh, I, I think a lot of it's irrelevant now, but great for the time. And he had a great tone. Most people don't even acknowledge the bass player for Megadeth, but he had a great tone. And, it's, and you hear a few flurries and beautiful shit here and there. But Steve Harris, all the way. 100%. Steve Harris is a master composer. He's a wild bass man. He's a great showman. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, Steve Harris all the way. Fantastic. You can, you can see Steve me. in the Concert Chronicles. Chapel's Concert Chronicles episode. Iron Maiden. <laughs> <laughs> Link below. Yeah, good we are. Let me go. <laughs> let me gonna go. Let me, let me, let me, let me learn how to speak. <laughs> Limit. <laughs> like a lemon lollipop and lily hammer. <laughs> exactly. Exactly as much. Um, Falcon. Uh, gonna go with uh, a couple of 90s guys. How about Billy Joe Armstrong or Rivers Cuomo? Oh, Billy. Billy Joe Armstrong all day. I mean, you just gotta look at like the, the wow. success rate on hit or miss with Weezer versus Green Day. Just that alone. Like, not the fact that, I mean, I love Green Day more than Weezer anyways. But just, I mean, Weezer started here, and they had Dookie and the Blue Album, but look like, look how many more hits Green Day had after that, whereas it just kept dropping. As we've talked about many times with Weezer, you know, that they just couldn't hold on to it. And, I mean, they're up to, like, 20 albums, and I don't even know 11 of them. Like... I don't love all the Green Day's albums from the 90s, but there was at least one pretty big hit off of just about every one that came out, whereas, you yeah. know, Weezer just didn't bring that out, so I'd go Billy Joe, even though I don't like that he's been hanging out with Billy Eilish or whatever a lot. That kind of disturbs me. I saw the <laughs> friends, so I don't know what to think about that. They were on the cover okay. of Rolling Stone together recently, I think. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I don't, I don't like that. It doesn't, doesn't sit good with me. There's going to be a new Billy band. (laughs) Okay, so this is a great transition uh, to my next question for Barnaby. Uh, So we're going to be talking about Billy's. Uh Uh-oh. Two members of the Billy band that can be joined, uh, Billy Joel or Billy Squire? Damn. I feel like I'm I'm getting some tough ones on this one. Oh, fuck. Uh, (laughs) Billy Joel. See Billy Joel. I can say that. Yeah. I, I well, I do love Billy Squire. I feel like Billy Joel's just got the far bigger backlog of just amazing songs. Like, like the Billy Joel Greatest Hits is like two discs, you know. Um, Billy, Billy Squire's not competing with that. There's so many Billy Joel songs I'll listen to that are just so great. Oh fuck, yeah, I, I can't live without Billy Joel. It's gotta be Billy. That's, that's a fantastic question though, because I do love <laughs> Billy Squire. 
You made the wrong choice, but I respect it. Uh, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> I totally disagree. Uh, Y'all know I don't like Billy Joel. I'd go Billy Squire I all day. I don't understand that at all. <laughs> I get you not liking his like biggest hits, but there's so much great Billy Joel out there, like so much. I ain't heard it. <laughs> I'm gonna throw one your way, Chapel. Uh oh, this is gonna be a fun one. Oh yay! Bruce Dickinson or Gene Simmons? Bruce Dickinson. He's the greatest prep man of yeah. all time. Bruce is the man. Gene is the great is a great showman as well. I mean, you know, but. Out of just sheer, like, Bruce never stops. He don't stay in one place long. And here he's in his 60s, and they still have the same setup on their stage where they have the big uh, riser that goes behind the drums. I mean, and he runs and sings those high notes the whole time and, you know, runs up there, fights with a guy in a giant Eddie suit, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and uh, keeps the crowd into it the whole time, the whole time. And, you know, he, he's still just one of the best front men ever. And, you know, Iron Maiden is, I definitely like Iron Maiden more than I like Kiss. Kiss is more fun for me, where Iron Maiden's more like, That's the right they, answer. they were molding shit. They were, they were, they were helping create shit uh, for people to, to take from and make their own for years to come, you know, and still sell out all over the world, you know. As for Kiss is, I, I love Kiss, but Kiss is just a, it's just a fun rock band. What, you know, that's all it is. It's, it's all about the stage show and all the fireworks and whatnot, you know. Yeah, it's fun, but you scratch the surface, it's no Iron Maiden. You can't beat Bruce Dickens. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm going to fire one at old Falcon. Battle of the Bass Players. <laughs> Flea or Cliff Burton? You know, I, that's a tough one. That's that's bullshit. I'd like to call that first off. Uh, <laughs> there's been a lot of bass player battling today. Um, more to uh, come. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, man, I, I have to go with Flea on that. Wow. Only because, as much as I love Cliff, I, I got more influence from Flea than anything. There's so much more. I, I just listen to so much Chili Peppers as a kid. And, like, the way that Flea plays is I, I really adopted that, like, where he only learns, like, three quarters of the riff. He just solos at the end of every 4-4. Four, four. I, I do that a lot. So I kind of say I took the shit out of that from Flea. Um, and I mean, that's what started me slapping. I didn't, I didn't really get into Metallica until after the Chili Peppers. I mean, just for me at least. Right. So I, I'm, I'm really leaning more towards Flea only because of how much he influenced my play. And Chapel, I'll tell us about you. Another oh. strange one. Uh, Warren Haynes or Randy Rhodes? Ooh, I love Warren Haynes. Warren is, uh. You know, still pumping out good material, but Randy all day, baby. Randy Rhodes. Randy, if if Ozzy didn't have an iconic guitar player to start off his solo career, it probably would have tanked. You know what I mean? And sure. Randy was just that guy to give that right amount of feel to like like he was such a different player than Iomi. And then when he played Iomi's stuff, he threw a lot of extra shit on it. He's a classically trained guitar player. He was somebody who, no matter where they went, where they toured, he he set up guitar classes in that town that while he was there to help teach kids how to play guitar. You know, he was just one of the greatest human beings ever. He was a brilliant musician and uh, helped pave the way for a, a lot of people. So, yeah, I definitely have to go with Randy on that one. Keith, my man. Yeah, yo. Getty Lee or John Paul Jones. Okay, I thought you were going to say something else and be like, damn you. <laughs> I've been here before. <laughs> um, I'm going to 100% go with Eddie Lee. Absolutely. Okay. 100%. Eddie, you know, one of the first five or ten bands that I got into at that age. And all three of those guys, I mean, what can you say? 
What, what, what more could I possibly say? Getty Lee is a master, and there's so much material. I mean, how many albums do they have? Did, did they hit 30? I have no idea. A, a shit ton. That's all I know. Yeah. <laughs> and, and most of it I love. So, yeah. Get it. I'm going to take one over to Bonnaby. And this one is pretty fucking random, I think. Um, basically because they both start with an E. And that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Elton John or Eric Clapton? Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, man. Yep, totally different. But <laughs> I love both of those so much. And listen to both, like, weekly. Like, damn. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to have to go with another piano player. I'm going to go Elton John on this one. Wow. wow. Well, I do love everything Eric Clapton's ever done. I can't imagine not listening to Elton John on a regular basis. Like, I really love some Elton John. Like, so much, like, I think uh, Falcon, like, I mentioned, like, emotion. Like, the like the music connects to you emotionally. I, I feel everything Elton John's been through when I listen to him and whatnot. Like, Eric Clapton, I just get a lot of drugs, you know. Like, I'm sorry, I get <laughs> You did cocaine. We know. <laughs> Ouch. Um, but, yeah, I, I couldn't imagine, like, not listening to, like, there, there are other guitar players I could feel the Eric Clapton void with. I don't know who I could feel the Elton John void with in my life if I didn't have Elton John. All right, so I'm going to throw one Falcon's way. Falcon. Joe Walsh or Robbie Robertson? Uh, Joe Walsh. Like, Robbie Robertson, I do really like him a lot. But Joe Walsh is, is such a badass. Like, Joe Walsh is such a cool fucking guy. Uh, and Robbie Robertson's kind of a dick, too. Like, I've read that he's been, like, a, a dick in some oh, interviews and stuff. Shit. Uh, even though I think he's a super That's underrated guitar problem. player. From the band... Oh. Like the band, the band. Sorry, I don't know if I need to clarify that. That's weird to say sometimes. Well, yeah, band. I know what you're about. Uh, they play with everyone. They were everyone's band. Like, yeah, like he's he's solid, but Joe Walsh is like a, a different type of freak of a guitar player. You know, he's like a real rock star type thing. Whereas Robbie Robertson's just Canadian, and that's not enough. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right. But, I'm going to bounce one back at you, Barnaby. Uh, this is my final one for the, the theme I've got going on, and this is another strange one because it's just the first name. Uh, and this is where I got the idea for the theme from. But Jack Black or Jack White? Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fantastic way to birth a theme. Because um, those oh. are two amazing people. Who make great music. Oh, fuck. Ah, I do love some Jack White, but I can't live without Tenacious D. Oh, man. I had... yep. They have, like, That's... two albums, and they're one of my favorite the bands ever. Like, fucking, like, they're so fucking amazing through two albums. The movie is great, and uh, the album with the, some of the songs on the album aren't even in the movie, and fuck, they should have been, because, God, they're good. Like, the metal... Isn't actually in the movie, but God, that's such a great song. I think they play. Don't they play it in the ending credits somewhere? I'm pretty sure they do. It's, yeah, it's like something like that, but it's not like actually in like you know the movie that most people see. Um, but yeah, that's a great fucking song. And like their first album, like Dave Grohl on drums, like fucking man, that's that's a super group that we don't talk about enough. Like how great they are. Like <laughs> we, can do, we can do a podcast on Tenacious D. I'm gonna throw one at Keese. Hey. John Petrucci or Alex Lifeson? Oh, you're talking Lifeson. So, uh, you know, that, that's two for Rush today. <laughs> I knew that would be close because I know you've talked a lot about how, how much you love Petrucci and like Dream Theater and everything. Um, but I, I feel like Rush is probably your favorite band from like what I can tell at this point. Like they're just... Everything always comes back to Rush, and every time we're like, "What should we listen to?" Like, I feel like your suggestions always Rush. Like, <laughs> so, 
I, uh, I thought that would be a, an interesting one to see which one you went with on that. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, I definitely love some Dream Theater. I mean, they're they're literally the first progressive metal band. Um, but yeah, it's Rush. <laughs> it's just <laughs> Rush. I'm thinking I'm going to throw it to Chapel for the moment. And this is a... Uh, I don't know. I'm thinking you think these are both meh. But I could totally be wrong. Okay. So that's why I picked them. Um, I'm going to say Lizzie Hale from Hailstorm or Amy Lee Evanescence. Mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, I... Be quite honest, I'm not a huge fan of either band. I mean, I, I like both bands. Like, I, I've never heard a song that I was like, man, that's terrible. It's just, but it's it's just like run of the mill. Uh, I think Amy Lee really kind of does some stuff for me that uh, I really enjoy. You know, vocally. Or I think Lizzie Lizzie comes off like our like this generation's Pat Benatar. She's just a strong female. Uh, vocalist. I mean, all her. It's not that she's not hitting good notes or anything. She she is. She's real powerful. But uh, Amy Lee just can do. She can do. She can do a lot. And I've seen her pull it off live. I, I uh, Lady Chapel is a big fan of Evanescence. Uh, she she likes uh, Hailstorm too, but she really likes Evanescence a lot. And so I actually got us tickets to the Fillmore where she did an intimate show because I mean they sell out. They. They sell out like bigger places, and uh, she just wanted to do this small little tour because they hadn't played in a while. She just wanted to uh, see uh, how it would do since she hadn't put out a record in years. And Fillmore sold out. It was like uh, it was one of the longest lines I had ever seen at the film. Far to be. I have one for you, man. I hope it's not as crucial as the last one, but it might be. <laughs> Don Henley or Meatloaf. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Not as crucial as the last one because I feel more definitive initially hearing both of those. Right, right. Um, I'm gonna go Don Henley because I can't live without the Eagles. I, I just I can't like Don Henley's solo career is forgettable, but <laughs> Don Henley with the Eagles, yeah, I, I need that in my life. I fucking love that out of Hell One and Two. Um, I think Meatloaf, um, honestly, and it, thanks to Falcon, um, when we used to have our album nights, I had not really heard much Meatloaf outside of the Meatloaf everybody knows, and probably the people who are watching this video, the Meatloaf you know. If it's only the common Meatloaf songs, I encourage you to dig into the whole Bad Out of Hell um, album. Pretty fucking great. Paradise, I, that was one of my favorite albums, <laughs> was the Bad Out of the Hell album listen to that because it's it's a it's a journey yeah but the eagles man i have to go don henley on that one but that is a good question fantastic um, i've been asked a lot of great ones tonight thanks you guys for really <laughs> bringing the heat my way on this one um i feel like a lot of the last last videos are more definitive this one's been pushing me a little bit here i'm not gonna lie well um i'm gonna throw one back at you chapel uh oh <laughs> and uh i saved everyone's best for last so my last round of questioning is going to be the one i thought would be the toughest for everyone and this one's going to go danny carey or neil pert Ooh. <laughs> i think i'm going to have to go pert i love Here danny i love great danny. answer That's i love great. danny danny's yes. fucking amazing danny is Fucking amazing. But I guess if you're just going to go on like full catalog version, I mean, look at how many albums Rush has. And Neil never disappoints in his drumming. And uh, not not that Danny, Danny still, even the, I, I, I still like his drumming in uh, the new album. I still just didn't really care for the new album. He's the best part of the new album. Like, yeah, you're definitely right about that. Like, like, by, like I, I saw I saw the video, the drum cam of him playing just the drums for that new song, Numa. And I was like, God Almighty, he's so good. He's he's so amazing. But yeah, Pert is, you know, 
he's the god of the drums. You know what I mean? It's like there's there there will never be. There's a lot of great, fantastic drummers, but there's only one who is paving. You know, you know, has that ability to pave the way for other drummers. I am down to where I have one question for everybody as well. But uh, I'm going to hit up Falcon first. Okay. Uh, Jermaine Clement from Flight of the Concords. <laughs> John C. Riley as Dewey Cox. Oh, shit. Well, that's, that's, some, that's pretty good comedy. Comedy rock question. I didn't think we'd ever have one of those. So that's, uh, You're welcome. Uh, yeah, I'm glad I don't have to answer this one, honestly. I, I'm going to throw in that, that. That's wow. I, I, I have to go with, with Jermaine, probably. I, like, I kind of felt like you would. I, I, I don't even know why. Like, I'm not sure that I even have a good reason for this. It's just like something about Jermaine is so funny like in that role. I, I don't know. It's hard to tell because there was two Fly of the Concords albums, and there was like basically a 45-track Dewey Cox album. Because of how many songs they wrote for that movie, and like thirty of them right. didn't even make it. Well, John so, C. Riley wrote a lot for that movie. Like he was just like, "I'll do it," you know. <laughs> it, yeah, it, it's really tough because Walk Hard is one of my favorite movies of all time. I've seen it over a hundred times. I I love it so much. But Fly of the Concords has got a little bit more. Uh, I don't know, like a little more. It's a little more witty. I feel like a lot of stuff in Walk Hard. Lyric wise was like, you know, you got the point. It was a very strict just rip off of whatever style they were going for. Right. Fly of the Concords is like thirty different styles of music and they've they've all wrote their own songs, you know, not based off other stuff. I don't know. Something something about that. So I, I have to go with Jermaine on that one. Uh, Jermaine. Uh all right. Uh this is I have already exhausted my list for Barnaby, so I'm gonna throw this one at Keith. This is my last one for you. Some more bass player questions. Uh and I actually was surprised that this one also got brought up earlier, but Elson or Rex Brown from Pantera? <laughs> That's going to be Elson. Really? Yeah, mm. absolutely. Um, I feel like Rex Brown, maybe, maybe, is there any evidence? Please show me that he, he could be a great player, but he sure was the one weak link in Pantera. Of three otherwise amazing musicians, and he probably is, but I, you never hear it. You don't hear it. You know, and that I always point to the live album, and and uh, feels like there's Rex on the bass, and it's like da 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 da. da. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's Come on, he's feeding the crowd the breakdown to the song they're getting the crowd ready for that song yeah he could have played something else but that's what they that was all that was his only job was to get them ready for the breakdown well he could have had some sort of lead into it if he wanted i'm sure i mean but the, it, maybe that was the thing maybe the, the rest of them were like three giant egos hey, and then he, four little rex you know he can't do anything maybe he was, rex keeps a lot of dimes know. rhythms live because you know dime just sort of goes crazy and jumps off of playing rhythm and you know he's he's backing him up. He, I don't think he's a virtuoso type bass player, but I think he's a solid bass player. But I would still go with Ellison, just because of the Megadeth catalog. Those those early days, yeah, he really stuck out. Let's do uh, Barnaby. Yeah. With the bit of uh, I have no idea how you feel about these two wonderful ladies, but I'm just gonna throw it out: Joan Jett and Pat Benatar. Oh, I love both. Not gonna lie, I I have been on record as saying I don't normally like female vocalists, but those two I can get down with. Um, those are those are two good ones. I feel like they're both a bit overplayed with some of their hits, and some of their other music doesn't get the recognition it deserves. Yep. But I'm gonna have to go Pat Benatar. Um, Right answer. I think Pat Benatar is just more talented. And Haas is just more of a badass. Like, I feel like Pat Benatar was so much more in everyone's face with it, where Joan Jett was not like that sort of... She wasn't trying to push any envelopes, you know. Um, whereas Pat Benatar wanted to be, yeah, look at me. Like, I can do rock too, you know. And I'm a kick-ass at it. Um, they're, they're both great um, vocally. 
I love both of them as, you know, like musicians, but I think Pat Benatar is superior. Great question, though. I'm going to throw one back at you, Keith, because I think you're the one that has the most left to ask. I've got two left to ask. Perfect. We're at the same level, then. So, as guitarists, I'm going to make that clear, since one of them definitely brings more to the table than guitar. Dave Mustaine or Kirk Hammett? Oh, wow. Great choice. Honestly. Great choice. They're both great. Like, I honestly, I would struggle to pick. I don't know a whole lot of the full discography of either band, because I stopped listening to both after the first couple albums, but both great. Oh, I definitely don't think that Hammett gets his due. I mean, I think he's somewhat recognized, but a lot of people like, he's just a pentatonic player and blah, blah, blah. His his phrasing and and the work he did is great. There's a lot of his solos that complement the song versus show off, you know. Um, so that's awesome. But that being said, I think I have to go with Dave, you know, because... Without Mustang, we wouldn't have some portion of Metallica, and we wouldn't have Megadeth at all. So, that dude, I, I, he's an inspiration as far as being able to play and sing. And I mean, play. Sometimes the complex shit that that dude's fucking, the riffs that are going while he's singing, you know, and he's not singing along to the riff, you know. <laughs> it's fucking... It's unreal. So, yeah, much love to you both, but I got to go with old Davey Mustaine. I'm going to go with Falcon and go with uh, my recent trend of Battle of the Ladies. <laughs> Taylor Swift or Gwen Stefani? Oh, Gwen all day. Like, Gwen always wins. Like, Gwen wins really? every... Oh, yeah. That's a totally different thing. Like, Even the amount of music... Good. Like, you put music aside. Gwen Stefani's, like, my dream lady, period. Like, of all time, if I was to pick a celebrity lady, it would be Gwen Stefani. So, like, even as much as I love Taylor, there's just... There's no way that I'm... Wow. I mean, even now. Look look at Gwen Stefani now. Like, at 52, she still looks just... Or however old she is. Fantastic. Whatever. I don't care. 52? I don't know. I thought that would be a tougher choice for you, though. You would think so, but you also have to look at it this way. Like, no doubt has the opposite problem that Taylor Swift had, in my opinion. They started out super strong and then started going the wrong way, whereas, like, none of the stuff Taylor Swift put out initially, like country stuff, I don't care about any of that. Uh, yeah. So, you know, she, she was born in 69, so was that 51? Woo! Wow! So, All right, she looks fucking amazing for 50, then. Like, Yeah, uh, and, like... Yeah, Tragic wow. Kingdom is also uh, a musical album. Obviously, neither of Taylor's albums are really that musically, whereas the entire band, no doubt, too. But, I mean, if you're just looking at Taylor or Gwen, I don't think Taylor could be doing stuff if Gwen wasn't such a strong leader in the 90s as a female anyways. You know, it's the same type yeah. stuff. Um, and because, you know, no doubt did start, like that Rocksteady album that had Hey Baby and some of their, they started going popular, which, I, again, I it was the opposite of Taylor Swift. You know, whereas yeah. I thought Taylor Swift was country and went pop, and but I like Taylor's newer stuff. But yeah, Gwen, I I don't know, man. If I'd pick anyone over Gwen, she's a doll, man. Yeah. But I, you know, the the reason I went with this was because I know I used to hear you say a lot about Gwen, but in recent the last couple of years, it's it's been all hey hey. What is Gwen? What am I, I don't watch The Voice. I can't talk about Gwen Stefani that much. She ain't doing shit for me to talk about. Taylor's still doing shit, you know? I mean, that's the only reason. But, no, nah, Gwen all day. But I will say, super glad you asked me that question. Uh, <laughs> because my last one, I've been saving this one for Chapel. Oh. It's, a, it's a hate question. And, uh, yes, oh. it does involve Taylor Swift, in case you hadn't figured that out. But here's your other option. Bono. Or Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> well... <laughs> this is another one. I'm glad I'm not having to answer this. I, I'm, looking, I'm looking for that revolver to take the easy way out. 
Well, to be fair, Barnaby, uh, this was your question <laughs> initially. Before really? I started the theme, I was going to throw it at you, but I, I decided to do the theme thing. So I decided to give it to Chapel instead. That's funny. I'm going to have... Oh, oh, I'm going to throw up just saying this. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I have to go, Pardo. I have to. There's no way. <laughs> I, 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 oh, God. Yeah, I'm sick to my stomach that I even said that. Thank you for putting me in that. <laughs> <laughs> I strive. That's what I strive to do, sir. What would you best here on this or that? Oh, I, I can at least live through with or without you, even though it's terrible. Uh, but, yeah, there's nothing Taylor Swift has ever done that I've ever heard that remotely goes, makes me go, yeah. I, I, I can deal with that all the time. <laughs> I can I can at least respect Joshua Tree from you two. Anything else past that, I really don't. <laughs> I, I was curious. Like I said, it was a total hate question. I didn't know where the, oh, the hate would bubble yeah. up higher for. Oh. I, I, I honestly thought you'd still go with Taylor Swift. I, I mean, just because oh, yeah, Bono's I, such a piece I, of shit. I, oh. Damn you, Falcon. Uh, <laughs> putting me through that. All right, Keith. Yo, Mary Spender, or that absolute Sky Sweetnam, the lead singer of Sumo Psycho. Oh, damn! That's a flight. Uh, um, Sumo, Sever, Psycho, absolutely. Really? Wow. Um, and you're picking between like my two celebrity crushes right now. Right, I knew. <laughs> I, knew. I love wow. you both. Don't hate me, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, there's there's something about both of them. Super talented, very different ways. There's <laughs> just something about uh, Sky. She's just oozing personality and wonderful energy just 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 emanating off of her like I could see the freaking golden waves of light saying I <laughs> am a goddess <laughs> I messed him up on that one well look, look at alright they're both great lyricists too right I think Mary Spender has some great lyrics but, but uh, Sky Sever is uh, so poetic and poignant. It's wonderful. It's been like a month or two since I listened to them. Damn it. Get that shit back in the play. Moving on. This is uh, my last one. And it's for Chapo. Oh, hell. <laughs> Hoping this is a good one. Maybe, maybe it's a good one. Maybe. Let's tear it out. Here we go. Here we go. All right. T Tony Iommi or Jimmy Page. Ooh. <laughs> I, I love both a lot. And both, neither one. The style of music I like wouldn't be here if it wasn't for both of those guys. I'm going to have to lean just a little more towards Tony Iommi because Black Sabbath's my favorite band. As to where, you know, I am a huge Zeppelin fan. I've just always been like, Black Sabbath is more my personality. Those first five Sabbath records. Just like the first five Led Zeppelin records. You, you know what I mean? They're just, they're iconic. It's that iconic sound. Uh, not that Sabbath didn't do other great stuff afterwards. You know, the Dio years and stuff was really great. Sabbath is one end and Zeppelin is the other. So... It's just, it's like a yin and yang for me. But, yeah, I, I lean just a little more towards Tony, even though I, I think they're two different styles of players. But, and I, I just, I, I don't think music would be where what it is today without either one of those guys. They both took blues in a different direction. For sure. Really cool. Like, Pretty much sure. at the same time, too. Yeah. Yeah. Exact for sure. same time. So, it's, it's insane, and they're all, they all and they all knew each other. 
You know what I mean? Like, right. they all knew each other, which is really you know, strange. Hard so, rock and metal were born at the same time. I've got one more question, and it's for Barnaby Jones. Barnaby, all right? These are, uh, these are fictional guys played by actual, yeah, I mean, you know, the people playing them can actually play in our artists, I'm sure, some sort. Uh, Bubbles, Trailer Park Boys, Bubbles and the Shit Rockers, <laughs> or Pastor Glenn from High Tatter <laughs> Service. Letter, what? It's letter, letter Kitty and Trailer Park Boys. Stand off no. here. <laughs> Fucking fantastic. Um, so, I'm going to have to say Bubbles and the Shit Rockers. Because I fucking love Liquor and Whores. <laughs> if you guys haven't listened to Liquor and Whores, if you're watching this right now, I what highly recommend immediately after, since we're nearing the end, go ahead and finish our podcast, then <laughs> start to lick my horse. Um, fucking amazing song. That, plus the stuff he does where he has the, um, he does the covers with the shit rockers. That's a tough one, because I do love that scene with Wayne. That's one of my hands-down favorite trailer, uh, um, Letterkenny, uh, scenes. It's just like, when it cuts to them, and he's doing his whole, like, My Chemical Romance imagery, like, emo <laughs> lo Wayne love song. Like, I fucking love Glenn as an underrated character. He's my, one of my favorites. I fucking love Glenn, yeah. That's a good one, Chapel. I like that. That was that was fantastic. That was my last question. I was saving that one. That one, <laughs> I knew we'd hey, get a big pop for it. Much the... like you, I've been saving my last one for Falcon. Because I know this is going to be the toughest one I asked today, and I'm really intrigued by what my answer is going to be. So, Falcon, John Paul Jones or Jacob Astorius? Because uh, I know Jaco. What? And I know you love some JP James. That's a tough one. That is that's a pretty brutal question. Because again, it's uh, that's apple and jelly. Like it's not even close to the same fucking comparison. You know, uh, I'll, I'll probably still go John Paul Jones. I mean, I like Jocko, but I John Paul Jones had was way more versatile. You know, Jocko could do some good composition stuff, but he was mostly bass player and horns, where it's like, I mean, John Paul Jones was before Led Zeppelin a studio musician, and it's still now just doing studio music stuff. I mean, he just, he plays a plethora of instruments. He's the reason that there's any other sounds on most of the Zeppelin albums is because, I mean, Jimmy wasn't doing it. Bonham wasn't doing it. Robert's just walking around shirtless. He's not doing it. John Paul Jones had to be the guy doing it. So as much as I, I'm such a big Jocko fan, but I, I, as you guys know, I got to Jocko because I was just trying to impress my bass teacher because he was like, oh, you like Jocko? Huh? I was like, oh, of course, I love him. He's my favorite, <laughs> you know. But uh, I, I've always loved John Paul Jones. I mean, the first time you hear Led Zeppelin, the, you know, you immediately, even not understanding music, are like, what's that, what's that low end noise? You know, on good times, bad times, any of that stuff. I don't know. I gotta go, JPJ though. Good question. That's tough. That's very tough. I don't think I'd ever have to compare the two. Well, hell yeah, fellas. This has been this has been fun as shit. Uh, a lot of a lot of tough questions. Some curveballs been thrown at us tonight. Uh, we all seem to. Really know what each other likes and hates. <laughs> Pretty well. Which is good. You know, and I, I'm not sure if there could even be another question asked about this at all. There's no more questions that could come up. Oh, wait, 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 wait. There was there was one I've been thinking on and off again. It just clicked on again. Let me, let me throw it out while I've got it. Let's start the next episode with uh, this or that for all of us. Two drummers, one band. Herb or Brain, Primus. Ooh. It's going to be tough. That's that's a, a good question. one. Hmm. I guess you'll just have to find out our answers next time on In the Polar. Bye, guys. <laughs> <laughs>